So then, now we've got a couple of text form fields to enter the to-do title and the description. Next up, we need some kind of form field for a user to select the priority of the to-do. Now, the priority could be one of four different values as outlined by the priority enum. Remember, it could be low, medium, high, or urgent. So that means we can't use a text field for this because then they could just enter in whatever they like. We need to limit the choices a user has to those four values. We don't just want them to type anything in. So instead, we'll be using a drop-down form field, which is a little bit like a select box with different options a user can select from. Now to do this, we use the built-in widget drop-down button form field, which is a bit of a mouthful, but this essentially creates us a drop-down box where a user can select from a few different options. Now, those values we can register by using the items argument inside this drop down widget. And the items should be a list of drop down menu item widgets, where each one of those is basically an option for a user to select. So, what you could do is create a list and manually add a bunch of those drop down menu item widgets inside that list. But I don't want to do that because it leads to a bit of a messy file lots of template code. So instead, what I'd like to do is map through the different priority values in the priority enum and return a drop down menu item widget for each one. So that in the end, we have a list of those widgets, one for each priority value. All right, so let's do that then. So we say the value is priority and make sure that file gets imported so we can use the priority enum in this file and then use the values property on it. This gives us a list of the priority values defined in the enum. And then we can use the map method on that list to map through them, fire a function for each priority value. And then inside that function, we can just return a widget for each one. And by the way, we get access to each priority value as an argument inside this function, which I'm just calling P. Now, before we flesh out the inside of this function, I just want to do one more thing, and that is to use the to list method on this value after the map method. And that's because the map method doesn't actually return a list, but an iterable instead. And the items argument expects a list as a value. So we need to turn this into a list by using that to list method, okay? So then inside this function, we can then return a drop down menu item widget. And this widget is gonna accept two arguments. The first one is a value argument. So what value are we going to eventually save or store or track when a user selects this particular option? And in this case, that's just going to be the priority value itself. So P, the argument we get right here. The second one is a child property, which is what a user will actually see on the screen for this drop down item. So we want this to be a text widget where we can output the priority title. So that's going to either be low, medium, high, or urgent. So let's output that inside the text widget then. And then that's all we really need to do. So just quickly before we preview this and see if it works, I just want to add a label to the drop down form field and also just show you one other thing as well. So let's start with the label. And we know to do that, we can use a decoration argument. This is the same as in a text field up here. And in fact, what we'll do is just grab that whole thing and paste it in here. Why write this out from scratch? <laughs> okay, so right here we can say priority of to do for the text. So priority of to do like so. So now we have the decoration, but we're still getting an error on this thing right here, right? And it says the named parameter unchanged is required, but there's no corresponding argument. So much like we have an unchanged argument for text fields, we also have one for this right here, and it's actually required in this case. So let's add it in. We'll say on changed, and this is going to be a function. Now, this function can accept the value of whatever a user selects. Now, when a user changes their selection, so if they open the drop down list, change it to something else, then it's going to fire this function because the value changed, and we get access to the value they selected. And we can do something with that inside here, inside that function. And we'll actually do that shortly. For now, what I'll do is just print out the value instead, just for now, all right? But we can do something with that shortly if we want to. Now, let's just make sure all of this is working. So we can see that form field right here now, this drop down button form field. So this right here is the label priority of to do. 
we can see the little arrow telling us we can drop this down and when we click on that we get all these different options so these are the priority values we mapped through and for each one we output a text widget with the title of that priority value which are these things right here now if we select one of these then the corresponding value p the entire priority value will be passed into this function right here the unchanged function and this is going to fire because we've changed it so let me change this to urgent in a second before we do that let me open up the debug console because we should see it over here so i'm going to click on urgent and then we should see over here okay something's oh there it is priority.urgent so it has worked okay if i change this again let's go to medium and we can see priority.medium so yeah everything there is working all right so there's actually one more thing i want to address and that is the lack of initial value so if you do a full restart of the application then when it reloads you're going to notice that initially the drop down box is going to have no value inside of it now that's okay if that's what you're happy with but i'd like to give it a default initial value when it first loads so to do that we can add a value argument to the drop down button form field widget and give that a value and that value will then be the initially selected value for this drop down so the value has to match one of the values we output inside a drop down menu item a priority so then let's make a new variable up at the top of the widget called selected priority and i'm making this a private variable too and then we can give that a value of something like priority dot low okay so that's going to be the initial value that we want to assign now to that drop down so back down where we have that drop down we can say the value argument is equal to the selected priority variable we just created which in this case is the low priority and that means when we first load the screen this will have a value present this one right here now when we select a new value from the drop down we also want to update that selected priority value right to be the new value we just selected and we can do that inside the on changed handler so we can say in here set state and then inside that we pass in a function in which we can take the selected priority and we can set that equal to the value that's just been selected which is just the value we get inside this function now technically for this little application we didn't really need to call set state because we didn't need to trigger a rebuild of the widget tree but in cases where you would want that then you would need to call set state anyway now we can preview this and see if it all still works before we do that we're just getting a little error right here and it says that a value of type priority with a question mark meaning this could be null can't be assigned to a variable of type priority so basically we just need to say that look this won't be null we know it will have a value just place your exclamation mark at the end over there then the error should go away now then if i do a full restart then we should see over here in a second the initial value low which is cool and we can change it now to different values as well now we're not seeing this set state do anything really nothing's changing all we're doing is selecting different values but under the hood what we're doing is updating the value of this selected priority which we will use later on when we create a new to do